So in 1999, uh, after a big workup at the Mayo Clinic, uh, I went on disability and moved to Richmond, Indiana, which is where I'm from now. And, uh, and so I lived there with my wife, Anna, and uh, we raised our son there for the time he was 14 until he finished high school and went on to college. To move to Richmond from uh, most of there, Wisconsin, we could have gone anywhere in the country. Uh, my parents were then in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, we wanted to get closer to them, but we also wanted to be in a small town. Uh, where, which, which would have all the things that we want to have without having a lot of freeways. Uh, uh, my wife doesn't like freeway driving, she's a wood eye driver. And so uh, we kind of poked around and, and, and we found Richmond, a uh, community of 40,000 people. Uh, and it has the sympathy, it has the arts, it has a lot of activities going on, and it had a program for the gifted and talented in the schools that was exceptional. And so we picked Richmond um, as a kind of ideal spot where, where we could live without driving a lot of freeways, but have every, every aspect of uh, community and culture and shopping and that sort of thing that you would, you would want to have. We are, uh, it's kind of a residential neighborhood. We own our own home uh, and, and uh, enhance an accessible entrance at the rear. I can climb stairs with handrails. So uh, it's a ranch with a full basement. Uh, and and we're like two blocks from a nice park with a lake. And one of the things I'd like to do, weather permitting, almost every day I will take my scooter out and go to the park and ride around the lake and look at the ducks and the geese and, and do all that sort of thing. Uh, and, and so our neighborhood is a fairly decent neighborhood, and there are a few potholes in the road, which with my vision impairment I have to memorize. But I get around and, and uh, nobody really bothers me, everybody seems to know me in the neighborhood, and they kind of look out for me. I don't. I don't experience uh, any, any real prejudice. People seem to know me since I'm on TV. A lot of people know who I am and I don't know who they are. Um, but uh, I do have a feeling that people look out for me. And for one thing, I ride a three-wheel bicycle. Um, for exercise, and I've had the chain fall off and things like that, and people will always stop and help if I flag them down. So people have stepped forward, and I've had people push my dead scooter on block or two to get back to the house, and things like that. Another great thing about Richmond is we have paratransit. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm, I'm president of the Community Council on Disability Awareness, 
uh, and I'm also the president of our therapeutic horseback riding program and uh, involved with our public access TV station. And so I have a lot of meetings. And since I don't drive to the vision impairment, um, they, the paratypes will come to our door and pick me up and take me wherever I need to go during the day. And uh, so it makes it possible for me to be involved in the community and, and do what I think and make my contribution. One of the big issues is that the uh, paratransit does not run at night. In fact, there is no public transportation at all at night. Uh, and so uh, transportation in the evenings is difficult. Not only for disabled people, but for people, students at night school or whoever, you know. Uh, and we have no intercity transportation. Uh, Greyhound pulled out their bus stop about five years ago, and so there's no way for anyone who does drive to get uh, outside the city limits unless they rely on family or friends. When I moved to Richmond, uh, the first thing I did was I started writing. And my first book was on pain management. And, uh, and so I was talking about the kinds of things that I do to, that help me and that I've done to help other people. Uh, but every time I went out to speak, the people in the greening line would come tell me their stories and how they had uh, how they had overcome their problems, or how they were coping with them, or what they were doing with their lives in spite of disability. So I felt a, a strong calling in uh, about 05, I started writing in 01, um, to, to uh, find a way to, to lift up other people's stories and other ways that people have found to make their lives livable and meaningful. So um, in, Rich, in Richwood we have a public access uh, TV station. So I'm on the government channel, uh, thanks to the mayor who said this is of public interest and, uh, and it's free. I don't have to pay to, to be doing it. Uh, and so it's a wonderful opportunity. The interviews are a half hour long and uh, give people a chance to share not only their own life story, but also some words of encouragement and to do a little disability awareness education along the way.